When Jesus Christ is your coach, you'll be asked to stand upon God's word in all circumstances. The purpose of life is to glorify God in good times and bad times alike. God will, when Jesus Christ is your coach, he will begin to ask you that whatever you're feeling on today, you maybe feel good, you maybe feel bad, but he'll ask you, begin to say what's not been said. Begin to proclaim God's promises in your life. If you're sick in your body, begin to proclaim that by his stripes, I am healed. If your marriage is falling apart, that you begin to proclaim that me and my house will serve the Lord, not just, just, just people apart, that God will restore your marriage, that God will set your kids free, that God will bring them back. Begin to say what has not yet been said in your life and you'll see it come to pass. Amen? We, we overcome by keeping our vision, our mission in the forefront of our mind. We have to understand that mind management is a first priority for an overcomer. Mind management is a first priority for a believer. We have to be convinced deeply inside, not just say with our own mouth, but deeply convinced inside that we possess the Christ nature inside of us. That Jesus Christ lives us and Jesus Christ does not lose a battle. Jesus Christ is victorious. And he said that he is for me. What is sickness that can come against me? What is that addiction that can come against me? That you have to be so confident in yourself that Jesus Christ is on your side and he never lost a battle. As Christians, there's a purpose for everything we face in life. When you become a child of God, whatever that you are going through, there is a purpose. If you are sick in your body, there's a greater reason for you not to be troubled. Ask the man at the pool of the Bethesda and he will tell you that God delayed his miracle in order to strengthen his determination and his desire for him. Are you going through, through a hard time? Are you going through a difficult time? There's a greater reason for you not to be troubled. Ask Joseph and Joseph will tell you that how sometimes God delays in answering your prayer so he can prepare you for that next level that is about to come. Are you going through disappointment? There's a greater reason for you not to be troubled. Ask Peter and he will tell you that sometimes God will allow you to go through disappointment in order to reserve you for redemption. All these heroes, the Bible the characters, all these heroes of faith that we read about in the Bible, they made God their source. They made God their strength and became pearls of usefulness. You have to make, you have to, you have to exchange your own strength for God's strength. You have to exchange because on our own strength, we cannot rely. But have to understand that our strength is as perfect weakness. Our courage is as perfect cowardice. All our sufficiency is of God. Everything that we can do today is by God's grace. Tell your neighbor, exchange your strength for God's strength. Tell your other neighbor, exchange your strength for God's strength. You may ask, how, how do we do that? Is through God's word and by his spirit. When you, our strength is our feelings, our things that we can go forward or we can accomplish on our own. But God's strength is the word of God. Is when you begin to, to dive into the word of God, you begin to meditate on it day and night. It will give you strength to overcome any unpleasant situation that you're going through. Your life depends on knowing the word of God. It is our standard. It is our weapon that we fight against our enemy on our daily basis. Amen. And when you're sick, when you're bound, when your circumstances begin to be unpleasant, grab onto the whole word of God and just begin to proclaim God's promises. There's so many stars in the sky and just says that there's so many promises for your life in the word of God that you begin to number them. That I am an overcomer. That the spirit that, that raised Christ from that lives inside of me. That Jesus Christ has healed me. I can do all things through Christ. Just begin to number all these stars that are in the heaven that shine bright. And you will see how God will give you strength to overcome your pleasant situation. Amen. No matter the situation that you are going through tonight, whatever you might be facing, there is a purpose when you're with God. And when you're with God, you will not lose a battle. And, and what more shall I say? Because time does not permit me to go and to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Samuel, and all the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised to them. Who shut the mouth of lions, escaped the edge of the sword, 
quenched the fiery flames, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became mighty in battle, and who rotted the foreign armies. All these biblical characters, they made God's strength their hope. They relied upon God with all their lives and became the heroes, the champions of faith that we read about tonight. Those who bless God in their hardship, they prove their sonship. Just like Job, when he was going through a hard time, began to say, God, blessed to be your name. When everything was good, there was children, he was the richest man. He was beginning to say, God, blessed be your name. Those who prove those who bless God in hard times, and difficult times, prove the sonship, that they are the child of God. We have to understand that God has not failed one person who relied on him. God has a track record of winning. And if God says that he's on your side, you have to have confidence enough that if I am with God in this situation, I will come through. When you have exhausted your, your mental, your emotional, every strength that you have, you can no longer rely on yourself. You simply need to trust in something, in someone who's stronger, who's smarter, who's wiser. Jesus Christ, who raises the dead, is our choice. Tell your neighbor, Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, Jesus Christ, who raises the dead, is my choice. He rescued Paul and Silas, and he will rescue you today. He healed with the woman with the issue of blood, and he'll heal you today. He delivered Daniel from the lion's pit, and he will deliver you today and in the future. God is on our side, and he does not lose battle. Amen? When you are confident in the promises that God has given you, that if God is for you, that nothing can be against you, you can confidently say like David, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I will fear no evil because God is with me and he's fighting the battle for me. When you are with God, you're no longer doing things by yourself. You're walking with him. When you're with God, you're no more lifting the load. He is there leading, lifting the load with you. If somebody dares you, if somebody tries to fight you, he's not fighting you. He's fighting God. And God has a track record of not losing a battle. We, we talked about how Satan many times brings us discouragement. It gives us pain. And I want to tell you that, that the greatest embarrassment you can give to Satan is to ignore his existence. And, and how do we do that? Simply when Satan wants you to cry, you begin to laugh. When Satan begins to say that, uh, they, that you will always be divorced, that you'll, that's how your family be, you'll raise children by your own, you begin to proclaim that I'll have the greatest marriage. I'll be the happiest. When you're feeling, when, when Satan begins to send you pain in your body, you begin to, to say that through his stripes, I am healed, I'm healthy, I am the way God created me. When you have lack, you begin, when Satan's saying that you will have not ends meet, then you begin to say to him that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and to his glory. When you are facing a situation when you don't seem to have an end and the devil seems and says, see, you're not going to walk out, that you begin to proclaim that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Each time Satan begins to remind you of your weakness, begins to remind you of your past failure, begin to remind him of his future failure because the battle has already been won. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that the battle has been won. And just want to go back to the counting the stars. And the funny part about, the, the interesting part about the stars is that they're always there. But we can only see them most clearly at night. During the day, they're still there. But the most evident, the most glorious time we can see the stars is when darkness begins to fill the earth. When you're completely surrounded by darkness, there you see stars the most clearly. And, and God knew that you're able. He said that, look, in the tent, you cannot see the stars. Step out of your comfort zone. Step into faith and begin to number them one by one, one by one, one by one. Because that's how many your descendants will be. God came to Joseph and he said that, look, I've given you a dream and all these things. Joseph was going through life. His father sent him to, to feed the sheep and, and he come into to his brothers and he sees that 
you know, he's giving, I'm about to give you guys bread, you know, we're going to reunite it. And, and Joseph's brothers begin to betray him and they tie him, they bound him and they toss him into the dry pit. At that time, Joseph was surrounded by complete darkness, separated from his family, from his brothers, from his friends, from fruit, from clothes, anything that you can think of. The only thing he had was to look up in the sky and we be see the stars and be reminded that God said, I gave you a dream. And he began to number the stars. Deep down inside, Joseph began to tell himself that I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a destined king. I know where I belong and it's not here. Going from the dry pit Things even got worse for, 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 for Joseph and he begins to be, be sold into slavery by his own brothers and, and I mean his life is just being shattered. But he keeps holding on to the dream that God has given him. He begins to be sold into Potter's house as a slave and as things are somewhat beginning to pick up, begin to, to think, it's like, okay, you know, it's getting a little bit better. It's better than the dry pit. I kind of like it here. But when the night comes, and he looks out the window he's always reminded of the stars and God begins to tell him remember the dream that I gave you and Joseph begins to tell down to himself that I am a chosen generation I am a royal priesthood I am a destined king I know where I belong and it's not here from from there you think things are going good and it's gonna happen, you know. Come on, they're elevating you. He's being he gets accused, falsely accused, he begins to be tossed in, in this prison cell away from everybody. And you think that this is the part where Joseph will be give up because dreams are shattered, destiny is being ripped apart. And in that darkness, only thing that he has is look out the window and see the stars. <laughs> 